Hello and good day, pre-algebra. Here with you to go over math packet number four, which is due on Tuesday the 30th. Uh, however, since we're off of school uh, Monday and, and Tuesday uh, before Thanksgiving, you can turn it in for me to check over um, on Monday the 29th. And if you do that, then for you, it will not be due until Wednesday the 1st. So if you turn it in for me to check over on Monday, it's due for you on Wednesday. If you don't, then it's due for you on Tuesday. But the purpose of this video uh, is to kind of go through each question, hit the highlights, explain the important part, and then uh, if you have any other questions not answered on the video, then please do feel free to contact me um, over the breaks, shoot me an email, and I'll do the best I can to help you out. So first page, uh, Judy listed the fifth number with a set of data, three, six, seven, and 10. The number she included made the mean of the five numbers equal to their median. What number could Judy have included with the data? So part of this is knowing the difference uh, between mean and median. Okay, mean being that average, if you add them all up and divide by however many there are, um, and then the median would be the number in the middle. Okay, So let's just kind of write these numbers down, 3, 6, 7, and 10, and take a look at this. Okay, uh, If we add a fifth number, that means when we add all these together, we're going to be dividing by 5. Right? Dividing by 5. Because 6 and 7 are already in the middle here, Whatever number we, we add, if it's if it's greater than seven, it's going to make seven the mean, or sorry, seven the median. If it's less than six, it's going to make six the median. So basically, what we're looking for, what number, we'll call it n here, that you can add to this data set and divide by five, will make the average either six, if you choose a number less than six, because that would make six the median. So then what number would make the uh, mean also 6? Or what number could you add in for n there to make the mean equal to 7? Because if that number is greater than, than 7, uh, it would make 7 the median as well. So there are actually two different answers here. You only can put one of them. But what number could you add uh, if you make the median 6, right? By picking a number less than 6, you want the average to also be 6. If you pick a number greater than 7, thus making the median 7, you want the average to also be 7, okay? So kind of get you started on that one, see what you can do from there. The next question, on a recent airline flight, there was one empty seat for every three passengers. If there were 132 total seats on the plane, how many passengers were on the flight? So essentially, you've got uh, a row of four seats here, okay? It says one empty seat for every three passengers. So three of these seats are filled with people, and there's one of them empty. You go over the row behind it, same situation, right? Three are filled, one is empty, and so on and so forth. In every row of four, three are filled and one is empty. So, so far, we've got a total of 12 seats represented here, okay? And nine of the 12 are filled with passengers. You have nine filled ones, three empty ones, 12 total seats. So the question is, uh, if there are 132 total seats on the plane, how many passengers are on the flight? So we've got represented 12 total seats, nine passengers. How is that going to look with 132 total seats? How many passengers will there be? And no, I do not expect you to draw 132 total circles and fill in three out of four and, and, and count them up. Um, there are some patterns to look for here. Uh, you can maybe use equivalent rates, equivalent fractions, proportions even. Um, but this is kind of how you want to think about it and how you want to set this up. Okay? Next page, five card challenge. Nothing much to say about this. Just make sure you are getting the proper number of points. You need at least 15. Make sure you're not repeating any equation. Um, but this is kind of the same process as in other packets. Uh, perimeter and area. Here we get away from just our standard shapes that we've been working with, just rectangles and maybe a triangle here in there. And we've got a rectangle. We also have this half circle. Okay. Now, this value here, right, part of the perimeter of the figure, even though we, we call the perimeter of a circle the circumference, uh, the formula for the distance around the outside of a circle is the circumference, C equals pi times the diameter, right? Times the diameter. And remember, the diameter is that segment going from one side of the circle to the other. So our diameter here is 14, OK? 
Okay. But here's the, th here's the thing. What this formula gives us is it gives us the circumference of a whole circle. We, however, don't want the circumference of a whole circle. We only want the, cir the circumference of half of a circle. So when you calculate pi times the, the diameter, you want to divide it by two. And that's going to give you that distance of that green curve there, right, going around, around the top. Area is a similar thing. The formula for the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared, okay? But again, that formula gives us the area of a whole circle. We only want the area of half of a circle. So again, once you calculate this, you're going to want to divide it by 2, and that's going to give the area of this semicircle. Okay. Then, of course, uh, as far as the, the perimeter of that rectangle, um, you've got the 10, the 14, and the 10 here. Okay. Do not include this 14 as far as part of the perimeter since it's inside the shape. Um, it's only there to kind of help you with that circle piece. Um, and then the area of a rectangle, uh, as we've used before, is base times height. So perimeter, distance around the figure, and then the area of the entire, entire figure, you will need to add the area of the rectangle to the area of that half circle to find it. Okay. Next one, we have the pattern block page, right? Uh, it says complete the table for the number of blue blocks and total blocks in the figure. So you are focusing on uh, blue ones and the total blocks. And like we said before, it might be easier to start with the total blocks. That's where gonna, the, the pattern is probably going to jump out at you uh, most quickly. So we see the first figure has one total block. Then we go to a two by three rectangle. So two times three is six. Then we go to a three by five, which is 15. Then we go to a four by seven, which is 28. Okay. And now for the number, number of blue blocks, well, we start with one blue block in each of our first three figures. And then we're adding Let's see, four, eight, we're adding 13 blocks there. But the question isn't how many are we adding, it's how many blue blocks are there total, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Don't forget about that one in the middle, that original one. And we can put 14 for our next three because we're not going to be adding more and more blue until the, until the fourth uh, figure, every four figures blue is added. It might be helpful for you to actually go through the green and the red also. Um, it, it actually could make this a little bit easier. But take a look at what patterns you can see here in the total blocks, going from one to six. Remember, we mentioned this one was a two by three rectangle. But well, cuts off there. Uh, this is a two by three rectangle here, right? Um, for a 15, that's a three by five. Our 28 is four by seven, okay? Uh, you can even call this one a one by one. Is there any patterns there that you start to kind of notice? One by one, two by three, three by five, four by seven, okay? That could help you with this one. So see if you can do that. Uh, next one, we have surface area. You do need to draw this net, and we'll kind of do that together here. Uh, you've got that square base. Right, that eight by eight square at the bottom. And you got triangles coming out from each side of it. So it kind of looks like, looks like that, okay? And then uh, what you're doing is you're, you're finding the area of all five surfaces and adding them together. Now the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two, right? The base of each of these triangles is eight, same as the Sorry about that technical difficulty. My uh, microphone pack <laughs> fell off my uh, clip and, uh, and hit the floor. So um, sorry about that. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the base of each triangle is eight since it's the base of that square. And the height you'll be using is this 16 measurement here. Okay? And all four triangles are the same size. So once you find the area of one, you kind of can get the area of, of all of them. And the surface area is all of those areas of all five uh, of those surfaces added together. We then have the same figure for volume here. And the formula uh, for the volume of a pyramid, it's very similar to a uh, cube. You know, if we were to kind of draw the, a cube around this pyramid, that was horrible. 
if we, <laughs> if, and erasing doesn't really work on this thing. Uh, anyway, a, a pyramid is a third of volume of the cube or the rectangular prism that it would come from. So if you recall, the volume for a rectangular prism is base times width times height. Okay. Base times width times height. A pyramid that would come from that is just a third of that or dividing it by three. So for this particular one, we are multiplying uh, 10 by 6 by 8, and we're dividing that by 3. I'll let you finish that, that calculation out. And then for pre-algebra here, how many faces, edges, and vertices does the figure have? And the height of the pyramid is not an edge. A face is basically a surface. Now, how many surfaces does this figure have? You've got a square on, on the bottom with four triangles around the, out, the outside. Um, an edge, you might also call it a, a side. So let me kind of... You know, this would be an edge here. That would be another edge there. Even the ones in the back that you can't see, right? That's still an edge. That's an edge there. How many total edges are there in the pyramid? And then a vertex, uh, the singular form of vertice, um, would be, you know, wherever two edges meet. So there's a vertex there. There's one there. There's one back there. How many total vertices are there? So three answers for this one. Number of faces, edges, and Vertices. Okay. Moving on now, Pascal's triangle. Right? Uh, it says on the left side to write the number of each row, and remember that top row is zero. So row zero is here, row one, row two, row three, row four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and row ten. And then on the right side, uh, it says write the sum of each row's elements. So in row zero, we just have a one, so the, this is one. Then row one, one plus one is two, and one plus two plus one is four, and uh, so on and so forth. So once you complete that right side, writing the sums of all the elements, uh, you got four questions here. What relationship exists between the sum of any row and the sum of the row before it? Okay, and then as you write down these sums, you'll start to notice a definite pattern here, like, oh, what, what happens as we move from row to row here, okay? And then using this pattern, uh, you, you get to predict the sum of the elements in rows 11 and 16, which aren't on the triangle for you here, right? We, we use these patterns to predict future outcomes, okay? Then we have our Tetris page. Uh, you're familiar with this. And we end with another logic puzzle, okay? And so what you might want to do here is read each clue. And not every clue is going to give you an, an answer. Usually what clues do is they allow you to eliminate things. The first one says, Laird is not right for either making movies or for sightseeing friends. Well, making movies probably goes along with the cinema, right? Cinema is all about movies. So we can eliminate Larry with cinema. He also doesn't write for sightseeing friends. Well, when we sightsee, that means we're traveling, right? So we can eliminate travel for Larry as well. So we've already narrowed it down to Larry for basketball or music, right? And then other clues are going to help us eliminate other things and ultimately lead you to what uh, is actually going on here. So um, there you have it. That is math packet number four. Again, if you have additional questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, that is how you math, folks. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great Thanksgiving. Gobble, gobble.